us. We've got to be connected to Him. Uh, this morning, we're going to be looking in Acts chapter, chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Let me read several verses here, and uh, we'll be in a, a few different chapters there in the book of Acts. Uh, our theme this year, and I won't preach about this every week, but uh, is uh, Acts 2020 vision. And the idea of that is seeing the world the way God sees it. Trying to catch, uh, uh, just, just having a, a heart for what God wants to, to do and what God is doing in us and, and through us. Acts chapter, chapter 20, verse 19, uh, Paul is, is talking to the, the leaders of Ephesus as he's about to leave and uh, he says, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was promised to you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. we we'll just stop reading there. We've been looking at several things in this passage. One is uh, who we are. Uh, he, he talks there in verse 19 about serving the Lord. Uh, if you're a Christian, you, you need to understand that makes you, a, you need to be a servant of the Lord, serving the Lord, he's, he says, with all humility of mind and with many tears and with temptations. Now, who are you this morning? Are you a servant of the Lord? Do you, do you know Jesus Christ? Then last week we looked at uh, verse 20, how he said, I, I've showed you our example. Now, how we live is, is so important. Are you in an example of the believers? Uh, we looked last week at, at 1 Timothy 4.12, and he was saying this to a young preacher. Uh, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. We looked at all those, those things. God wants us to be an example of what believers should be. Uh, not just the pastor, not just some special Christians, but as Christians, uh, we need to be an example. You know, for some people, you're the only Christian they know. And uh, your testimony is going to make a difference. So we've looked at serving. We've looked at showing. Uh, today, I want to look at speaking. Uh, Paul talks about how that he, uh, he taught publicly and from house to house. You know, publicly and privately, he talked about the Lord. Uh, verse 21, testifying. Uh, and basically, he's just saying to everybody, you know, the, the Jews divide the world up into Jews and non-Jews. <laughs> Jews and Gentiles, and he says, witnessing, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, and here's what he testified, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, and he's, he, he believed, verse 24, that his ministry, at the end of verse 24, was, which I've received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. God had given him that ministry to testify the, of the gospel. And you know what? God has given us that ministry too. It's called the Great Commission. <laughs> That's what God has said for every believer, for every church. Take the gospel uh, to the whole world. And uh, uh, it's, a, it's a ministry that God has given to us. You know, what we are will come out in our example. If we're a servant of the Lord, that's going to come out in how we live. And it will also come out in what we say. Servant of the Lord. Uh, later on in Timothy, he says, the servant of the Lord will not, should not strive. You know, we're not going to be argumentative and, and that kind of a person. And it's so important for us to speak the gospel. Let, let me just make a personal admission here. I find it hard to get started with the gospel with people. Yeah, I talk to people a lot. And I talk to people about spiritual things a lot. But to get the conversation started of... If you died today, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? Are you a Christian? You know, there's different ways that, that we might choose to start it. But it, it can be hard sometimes to move from just average conversation to spiritual conversation to the gospel. What about you? If, if you 
Dive, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? And that's not always the best way to, to ask the, the question. But uh, to, to share the gospel. If we're not going to share it, who will? I mean, really. Uh, there's plenty of cults out there sharing a false gospel. Uh, there's the, the world, you know, sharing humanism, saying, ah, don't worry about it. One guy even sent a, a bus around the UK saying, don't worry about the Lord. It's probably not true anyway. You know, big, big sign on the, on the side of the bus. We, we should do that about evolution. Don't worry about evolution. It's probably not true anyway. <laughs> but we can say it's, we know it's not true. Testifying. Testifying. It has several aspects. One is just what God has done. And you can talk a long time about what God has done. I, I'm continually amazed at how intricate creation is. You know, there's just thousands of things that have to work together for all of this to work. You can't just have one little thing. Uh, we can testify about what God has done. The heavens declare the glory of God. But testifying also has to do with what God has done specifically in my life. What God has done specifically in your life. Uh, there's a, an old chorus we used to sing. After all he's done for me, how can I do less than give him my best? After all he's done for me. You know, as you, as you stop and look at your own life, what could have been and yet what God has, has done. Uh, we have a testimony. Paul had a testimony. Paul must have been a real interesting fellow. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to meeting him. In uh, Acts uh, chapter 23 and verse 11, just read this one verse, then we'll go back. God says to him, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. He says, you've, you've been given witness in Jerusalem. You're, you're going to give witness in Rome. Well, he was where he was because he had been arrested when he was attending church. <laughs> now, it wasn't really church, but you know what I mean. Uh, he was at the temple. And, and some, people, some people got upset that he was at church. Uh, can you imagine? And uh, they raised a crowd. And, and l Let me show you. It's over here in uh, chapter uh, 20. No, let's see, 20, 22, I think it is. 21, there it is. People began yelling. A crowd gathered. Uh, verse 30 of chapter 22, 21. We'll get it right. All the city was moved. The people ran together. Uh, verse 31. As they went about to kill him. <laughs> Man, this is getting pretty serious. Uh, at the end of verse 32, the, the, the police come, basically, the soldiers come, and they left beating of Paul. They stopped beating him. Uh, pretty exciting when Paul comes to church, uh, comes to the synagogue. I shouldn't say church. Uh, but the soldiers take him, verse 33, and, and they commanded him to be bound with two chains. Well, as they're taking him away, they're, they're at the steps of the castle. Uh, Paul asks, could I just talk to the crowd? And uh, uh, the police, uh, the soldier says, sure, go for it. <laughs> he was an Australian uh, soldier. Yeah. <laughs> no worries, he said, go for it. And... Uh, <laughs> So Paul, as he's in chains, he's just been being beaten. They were trying to kill him. Uh, and he starts to talk in Hebrew. And, and the crowd gets, gets quiet. Some people thought he was an Egyptian. And some, you know, there's all kinds of rumors going around about him. And he gives testimony standing there on the, on the steps of the castle. He, he tells what he used to be, how God saved him, God's call for his life. <laughs> he probably takes five or ten minutes just sharing his testimony and the crowd's kind of like stunned mullets looking at him, I guess. You know. uh, here he is uh, giving his testimony. Well, a a as a result of that arrest, uh, you know, he, they do put him in, into, into jail. and He comes before the Sanhedrin. That's the, uh, the council, the Jewish council. And uh, then later on, he comes before uh, Felix, who is, is the governor in uh, chapter 23 and gives his, uh, his defense. Uh, I'm sorry, in chapter 24, the high priest and the Jewish elders are there in 23. And uh, Felix, who, who's the governor, uh, listens to him. And then he, uh, in verse 22 of chapter 23, um, no, I'm sorry, chapter 24, well, I'm having trouble with my numbers today. When Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, uh, he, he knew a lot about the Bible. He deferred them and said, when Lysias, the chief captain, shall come down, I'll know the uttermost of your matter. 
And he commanded a centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty and that he should forbid none of his acquaintances to minister or come unto him. He's basically under house arrest. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. So here he's been tried, and then he's appeared before the governor, and the governor says, I want to hear more about this. And verse 25, this is as he, Paul, reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I'll call for thee. Now, the Bible does say he hoped also that money should be given him. He, he wanted a, a bribe, which is very common in, in those days. Uh, Felix asked to see him again. He wanted to hear more. And, and it's like he's saying, almost thou persuadeth me. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of people like that. And then, uh, because of Felix, he gives his testimony in Acts chapter 26 to King Agrippa. Paul gets a lot of opportunities under unusual circumstances to give a testimony, to bear witness to the Lord. Uh, King Agrippa is the Herod. You probably heard of Herod. We, we hear about it at Christmas. Well, this is a, a different one, but uh, the next one or two down the line. Uh, King Agrippa comes and he wants to hear from Paul. In Acts chapter 26, Paul begins to share his, his testimony. and That's the main thing we're going to read this morning. Uh, verse 2, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews. And he says to him, especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. <laughs> hear me out, King. And here he, he begins to talk about what he was before. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify, that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, under which promise our twelve tribes instantly serving God day and night hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? He's talking about the resurrection. I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them, and I punished them oft in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme, and being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even under strange cities. So Paul is telling what he used to be. That's... That's the first part of any testimony, what I was before Christ. And man, he was a, he was a mean critter. <laughs> uh, he, was, he said, I was mad. Uh, then he says, verse 12, Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. He says, I, I saw light. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in which I will appear unto thee delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, and that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Now remember, this is Paul sharing his testimony with King Agrippa. He's telling him what, what he was, what happened when he met the Lord. He heard a voice, he saw a light. Now, let me say this. You're not going to have the same testimony, all right? We're not Pharisees. Uh, we're not going to see a light and hear a voice. Uh, there are things that will be the same, but it won't be those practical uh, earthly things. And he, he then says to him, verse 19, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For this cause, for these causes, the Jews caught me in the temple 
and went about to kill me. Uh, so he says, I, the Lord spoke to me. The Lord gave me the, uh, you know, the, the word. He said, I, I listened and I obeyed. I was not disobedient. And I've been sharing this with, with other people. Verse 22, having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. He says, it, it changed my life. He said, I'm, I'm doing today what God called me to do that day. And, and he ends with the gospel. He said, I'm just, you know, they, they had the Old Testament. He said, I, I'm preaching what the, what the Bible says about the coming Messiah that is Jesus. And he, he puts the question then to him. You know, this, this is an important part of, of witnessing, is saying to the person, well, what do you think now? Verse 24, as he thus spake, uh, Festus, he, he's the fellow after Felix. Remember, Felix was the governor. The new one's name is Festus. I guess they, they had to start with an F, I guess. I'm not sure. Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. But he said, I'm not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. Uh, let me tell you, some of you probably had people say, you're crazy to believe that. <laughs> That's insane. He goes on. For the king knoweth of these things, before whom also I speak freely. For I'm persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, he puts the question to him, Believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then King Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Well, what a, what a sad comment that is. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am, except for these bonds, you know, wherever his, the, the chains were. You know, there's, there's people who are almost Christians. I talk to a lot of people. Uh, are you a Christian? Oh, I think I am. I hope I am. I'm trying to be. Uh, well, listen, that's, that's almost. But a Christian, God says, I've written these things that believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Uh, Paul is saying, I, I don't want you to be almost. I want you to be all together, except for these bonds. <laughs> Uh, we need to be able to share the gospel with people. But you know, it starts with having a testimony. Uh, you need to meet the Lord yourself. I, I, I've shared this many times. It's not a very important illustration. But uh, when I was new to Australia, I, I'd, never, I'd never been in a bakery where they just had loaves of bread, just, you know, just all laid out. And uh, I was, went into the bakery, and I asked the girl, I said, is this bread good? I, I've never seen it like this. She said, I, I don't know. She said, I've never had any. And I walked out. I thought, well, I'm not eating it if she's not eating it. <laughs> uh, and you know, for us to share Christ, for us to have a testimony, we need to have, well, he says, unless you eat, eat me and drink me, he said, you're, you have no part with me. We need to know the Lord. We need to have a testimony, first of all, uh, what God has done in your life. There needs to be a time before you were a Christian. There needs to be a time when you trusted Christ. And, and there needs to be a change because of, of Christ. Uh, in your life. Uh, don't be an almost Christian. Be an altogether Christian. Uh, Paul's testimony, it, it was very unusual. And, and yours, you might think, oh, my testimony pretty boring. You know, I, for me, I was raised in a Christian home, and you know, I came under conviction of my sin when I was six years old. <laughs> you know, and, and six-year-olds do a lot of sinning, uh, but it's just kind of different than a 16 or a 26-year-old. And, uh, you know, trusted Christ as, as a child. And then went through, you know, different different things, but, you know, I don't have an exciting testimony like Paul, you know, God knocked me off my, my horse and, you know, all that, that kind of thing, uh, but that's okay. It's still a testimony. It is what God did in, in my life. I, well, I'll tell you what, praise God that I, I grew up in a Christian home and had parents that knew and loved the Lord that modeled the Christian life for me. I can, I can remember often getting up and seeing my mother reading her Bible on the couch and praying and, uh, you know, hearing my dad give us um, instructions from God's Word. I remember one time I, I had two brothers and a sister, and one of my brothers called my other brother a fool. Well, my dad immediately got out the Bible and said, look, here's what God says about that. Don't do that. You know, it's, it, there's, a, there's a testimony, and we each have a, a different 
circumstance that we're going to go through, but the gospel is the same for everybody. It was the same for the Apostle Paul. It's the same for people in Europe or Asia or America. You know, the gospel is the same. And uh, our testimony, the circumstances might change, but the message is the same. And, and Paul's message, as we read there in Acts chapter 20, was repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 20, verse 21. Later on, he said in verse 24, uh, his ministry was to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Uh, our message is the gospel. Uh, in uh, adult Sunday school, they, they really got into Acts, uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and looked at, at the gospel. But you know, part of uh, the message has to do with repentance. A lot of people don't like to deal with repentance anymore, but it, it's part of it. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance has to do with sin. And I can tell you, based upon God's word, we all have experience with that. Uh, we all know what it is to sin. And uh, when, he, when he talked to, uh, was it King Agrippa in, in Acts chapter um, 24? I could have the wrong person there. Um, Acts 24 and uh, uh, verse 25. Get the right chapter here. He reasoned, oh, it was Felix. He reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. Righteousness, temperance, and justice to come. Now, if you think about that, he's dealing with the, the three ages of sin. Righteousness has to do with, with sin in our past. God says all of sin and come short, short of the glory of God. We are not righteous in ourselves. If we're going to talk about righteousness, we're all going to fall short. Now, you might do better than me, but you're not going to, you're not going to be 100%. Then he talks about temperance. That's today's temptation. We all deal with the temptation to sin. Everybody. Yeah, these are things that are common to man. Uh, and judgment is tomorrow's judgment. How God is going to deal with, with our sin. Uh, he, he, he reasoned with Felix of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. And he trembled. But he said, go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I'll call for thee. That's where a lot of people put God. That's where a lot of put, people put Jesus. Well, someday, when it's convenient, I'll, maybe I'll trust the Lord. Listen, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Uh, when, when Jesus is knocking on your heart's door, when conviction of sin comes, that's the time to say, Lord, save me. And his message was repentance. Folks, people need to know. Now, that's not a popular message. I can tell you. Uh, there's just things people don't like to hear. I don't like to hear it. You don't like to hear it. And of course, lost people don't like to hear it. It's more than just God has a wonderful plan for your life. Listen, God has a wonderful plan for your life. But you'll never know it unless you first of all deal with sin. And that's part of, of our testimony. You know, we can share how the Lord dealt with us. We don't have to, you know, put so much. We, but we can share with them what God did with us. Because if you're saved, you went through a time when you were pretty uncomfortable with your situation. It's called conviction. It's hard living with a person under conviction. <laughs> they can get real mean. Uh, you, can you imagine being around the Apostle Paul when the Lord was convicting him? Uh, he was real mean. He was mad. He, he was insane for, against God. But then when he got saved, God, I don't know, I think God has a sense of humor, you know. Uh, Paul's running around killing people for trusting Jesus, and then he goes around telling people about Jesus and has people chasing him around trying to, you know, to, to give him a hard time. Uh, people need to know about sin. All of sin. The wages of sin is death. Uh, people need to know about repentance. People need to know about faith. Faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when the Bible says the wages of sin is death, that's not the end of the verse. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What a wonderful Savior. You know, God, is, God doesn't just point out our sin. God is the remedy for our sin. He became sin for us. Faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. People need to know the gospel. Have you ever noticed how, and, and I'll use the word Satan, you know, Satan uh, likes to corrupt words. One of the verses about talking says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Uh, Satan likes us to use the word hell to mean good. Uh, I mentioned this the other day, oh, I had a hell of a time. They, they don't mean that they got burned and, and were in torment. 
I mean, they had a good time. Listen, that's a corruption. Hell is a place of eternal darkness and fire and torment forever. And, and this, this word, the gospel, people use the word gospel, it means nothing. Oh, that's the gospel, you know. And they mean it, it's the truth or, you know, it, it's something that's very reliable. But the gospel has a specific meaning. Uh, in Acts chapter 20, verse 24, we've seen, you know, Paul said, that, that's the ministry God's given me to, to share the gospel. Now, let me ask you this question. I'll put it this way. Why would I not share the gospel? I mean, really, it's good news. That, that's what the word means. Good news. Good news. We like that. Well, I, I think you can see it there in Acts 20, verse 24. I think God's given us a clue why we sometimes don't share the gospel. Paul was able to say, none of these things move me. He's talking about the, the persecution. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I've received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. The, the first couple of things he says there, I think that's the problem many times. I think these things do move us. We get persecuted and we think, oh, I'm not doing that again. You know, you... you just talk to somebody about the Lord, and boy, they give you a hard time, and think, ooh, that was tough. And I think sometimes we do count our lives dear to ourselves. You know, for most of us, the most important person in the world is me. <laughs> you know, that's just the way, we, the way we're built, I guess. We're, we're pretty selfish. But as Christians, we need to be careful that we don't count our lives dear to ourselves, that we're servant of the Lord, that we're willing to, to surrender. We were, Looking at the phrase this morning in Sunday school, I die daily. And that's a good thing. <laughs> He's not talking about a bad thing. He's talking about surrendering yourself, getting rid of self, and serving the Lord. Now, you know, witnessing is, it can be hard. It can be difficult. Uh, there can be opposition. You know, Paul did end up in Rome in Acts chapter 28 and verse 16. And he was a prisoner. Acts 28 verse 16 says, when we came to Rome... Well, the we was, he was, he was a prisoner being uh, taken there. The centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. Again, Paul was kind of allowed to be under house arrest. He was probably a pretty good, easy prisoner to handle. It, it says then that he called together the Jewish leaders. Uh, verse 70, 17, it came to pass that after three days, Paul, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. And then uh, later on in, in uh, verse um, 21, they said to him, We neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came showed or spake any harm of thee. He said, We haven't heard much. But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest. For as concerning this sect, he's talking about Christianity, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. <laughs> Funny how it depends on who you hang around with. You, you know, uh, the people they'd have been hanging around with would have said, oh, those Christians, that's terrible. But if they'd have been hanging around with Christians, that would have been a completely different story. Verse 23, when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodgings. He was under house arrest, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. He took the Old Testament and he showed them Jesus. And some believed. Some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. Listen, that's just the way it is. Not everybody is going to believe us. But you know, you can't decide ahead of time who that's going to be. Sometimes you look at somebody and think, oh, they'll never hear me, and they will. And other people think, oh, they'd make a good Christian, and they will never listen to you. You just don't know. Uh, I don't think you'd have looked at the Apostle Paul and thought, oh, he'd make a good Christian. <laughs> you know, when he got saved, people wouldn't even believe it. They were they said, oh, he's, he's trying to trick us. Um, you know, we need to be willing to, to share the gospel. Paul was, was there in prison, and uh, when, when people came to see him, he, he talked to them about the gospel. He shared the gospel. In uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and, and verse 1, we need to ask our, answer the question, what is the gospel? And God very carefully and specifically tells us what the gospel is. Now, generally, it means the good news. But uh, when, we, when it comes to the things of God, 
God tells us uh, particularly what it is. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. Uh, you know, the gospel is pretty important, isn't it? It's how we get saved. Uh, verse, verse 3, he, he gives us then the definition of the gospel. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Now, this is not something he, that comes from him. He received it from the Lord. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now, it goes into some more details. But, but that's the, the three basics of the gospel. That Christ died according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures uh, we saw there in verse 2 uh, by which also ye are saved to be saved a person has to believe the gospel that Christ died that Christ died specifically for their sins but for the sins of the whole world that he was buried there's been all kinds of false teachings you know that Christ didn't die on the cross and you know, there's all kinds of things but, but there were so many witnesses, and these were people that were experts in death. I mean, not like today. Probably most of us have never seen a dead body. Now, that wasn't the way it was then. And the, the people that were dealing with Jesus, uh, they dealt with that every day. But they knew death. Uh, see, if you're saved, you're saved by believing the gospel. That, that's what he says there in 1 Corinthians 15. And if you're saved, you need to share the gospel. You know, it's... It's just an amazing thing that God would make us, knowing that we'd sin. I don't know. I'm, I'm not God. I don't, I don't understand everything. But it just seems incredible to me that, that God made us, and he made us in his image, meaning we have a, a, a capacity to choose. And if you have a capacity to choose, it means you have to be able to choose the wrong thing. You know, don't give people a choice if you, if you don't want them to choose the wrong thing. Uh, but God made us knowing that he would have to die on the cross for our sins. Now, if you're saved, listen, serve the Lord. Be a servant of the Lord. Uh, show the Lord in your life. Be an example of the Lord, but also speak about the Lord. If nothing else, share your own testimony. Listen, people really can't argue with that, can they? They can't say, oh, that didn't happen to you. Uh, and share the gospel. You know, even Paul asked people to pray for him that he would be brave enough to share the gospel. In Ephesians chapter 6 and, and verse 19, he wrote, he's talking about them praying for him, and he says, And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. He said, I need God's strength to be able to do what God has, has called me to do. And this morning, I, I would just ask you the question, have you received the gospel? Have you received the gospel? Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Have you made it personal? Well, we know he died for the sins of the whole world, but have you made it personal and said, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I need your forgiveness. Lord, please save me. That's not something you need to do every day. It's not something you need to do many times. Jesus called it being born again. Born physically, you need to be born spiritually. John wrote in John 1.12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. You just receive the Lord. You, you come, like Paul wrote there in, in Acts, repenting toward God and believing faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ, believing the gospel. See, God says we're all born sinners. That made us enemies of God. That's an amazing thing, that Christ would die for us while we were at enmity with him. And God says the only way to be right with him is through Christ, the gospel. Jesus said in John 14, No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You know, religion likes to add things to that. Oh, Jesus plus baptism or Jesus plus membership. I was reading something the other day. It just boggles my mind what some religions do. Uh, there's some religions where when you die, your family is going to have to pay a big fee to get the, the right ceremony to make sure you get into heaven. Uh, Listen, that, that, that's, not the, that's not the Bible, folks. It, it's not salvation. It's not faith plus something. It's faith plus nothing. There's no substitute for Jesus. There's nothing else you can do uh, instead of Jesus. 
Listen, you can't be good enough. Joining a church won't do it. Getting baptized won't do it. It's by faith in Jesus. It's through the gospel. In Acts 26, Paul was able to say, I, I was not disobedient. You know, when, the, when the Lord called him, he trusted the Lord. When the Lord said, here's what you're going to be doing, he trusted the Lord. He obeyed the Lord. And Folks, when it comes to salvation, don't be disobedient to the Lord. You know, we have a natural bent <laughs> as humans to not want to do what we're told to do. You, you try it sometime. Uh, just I anything physical. Oh, you can't come in here. You've got to go through there. Uh, oh, why? You know? uh, we, we want to do what we're told not to do. Listen, don't be disobedient when it comes to salvation. Humble yourself. Uh, admit. You know, have repentance toward, the, toward God. We're all sinners. We all deserve help and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And then share that with others. You know, when, uh, when asked the dis how, how to get to heaven, they said, what must I do to be saved? Uh, the disciples said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. In Romans, he says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God is willing and able uh, to save to the uttermost. Not just almost, but absolutely. And uh, what a blessing that is. That's another word that's been corrupted, isn't it? Uh, God can save you absolutely, not just a little bit. Uh, let's go to him in, in prayer this morning. Maybe the Lord is speaking to your heart about the gospel. Maybe you need to trust Christ as your Savior. You can do that today. Maybe you've not been sharing Christ with others. God can help you to do that. Father, thank you so much for your word. Lord, thank you for the testimony of, of Paul and others who were willing not only to live for you, but to die for you. And uh, Lord, to share the gospel. Father, help us and open our eyes to those around us that need to hear. Father, why would we not? Lord, I pray you've been so gracious to us. You've been so kind and long-suffering. Father, help us to have a heart for people around us. Lord, help us to love other Christians, but uh, Father, help us as well to uh, have a concern for the, the lost. And Lord, help us to put it into words that they might hear our testimony and the gospel. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.